AI and ML is kind of a collection of techniques that we basically use um, data examples to learn to perform better at a certain task over time. So instead of actually coding up rules on exactly how a program will run, we use data examples to inform how we learn to perform on a certain task. What is the first word that comes to mind when you hear artificial intelligence? Robots. Robots. Learning. Progress. Future. To the deadly crash, the car on autopilot using advanced technology. A big feature of the Tesla vehicle in question is that it allows drivers to let go of the wheel. According to several reports, Facebook's artificial intelligence researchers had to shut down two chatbots after they developed a strange English shorthand. Media reports and movies have revealed to us this dystopian view of artificial intelligence and advanced computing. However, you might be surprised to learn that AI is not just reserved for autonomous robots, self-driving cars, and replicating human strategy. It has actually been used for years in our everyday lives. From small area like, ever, like uh, the washing machine and the fridge, uh, refrigerators and all those uh, machine learning and the, to the larger part like autonomous driving and uh, intelligent medical treatment and the smart city, smart home. Your uh, dishwasher might optimize how it uses water um, to be more efficient. It will make those decisions without you telling it exactly how much water to use yet it's making some mechanical decision on how it's acting. Because AI is used in such a wide variety of applications without us even realizing, it can be hard to fully comprehend how it works. Artificial intelligence is simply the design and development of machines to emulate human behavior and cognition. That means getting suggestions from autocomplete, unlocking your phone with your face, using Google Translate, and getting rerouted on maps all fit under the umbrella of AI. As for the more complicated tasks that people think about, such as robotics, object detection, self-driving cars, and personal assistance, recent advancements have caused developers to switch from traditional algorithms to machine learning. The most successful machine learning functions to date are called deep neural networks. These consist of multiple layers of numbers that transform enumerated inputs into some specified output. For example, a car's camera could pick up an image of a stop sign as an array of pixel values and return an action such as forward, left, right, back, or stop. A deep neural network learns on its own by running a continuous feedback loop in which it attempts a series of actions, gets evaluated on its performance, and then updates itself based on that evaluation. Now, if we revisit the past news about Facebook's AI chatbots creating their own language, it doesn't seem to be such unexpected behavior. The head researcher of the study, Michael Lewis, explained why in a recent interview. We gave some AI systems a goal to achieve, which required them to communicate with each other. While they were initially trained to communicate in English, in some initial experiments, we only reward them for achieving their goal, not for using good English. This meant that after thousands of conversations with each other, they started using words in ways that people wouldn't. While most of these learning algorithms operate on their own, we know that they still follow rules developers give them in the form of optimization objectives. However, even the top researchers in the field will admit to not fully understanding how or why these functions work. I mean, in terms of deep neural network, definitely we are very early and we don't understand why it makes such uh, like predictions and that's why uh, like the area of adversarial machine learning is very um, intrinsic because we don't know why or when the machine learning models will make mistakes. The main thing is what we don't know what the intermediate layers, for example, in deep neural network learns. Like, like, like uh, just uh, like we don't understand our brain. Like we don't know why we can recognize like computer things. We don't know how it functions. It's similar for deep neural network. So if these systems are practically self-learning and we still don't fully grasp their inner workings, should we fear them becoming sentient or self-aware? How much control do we really have? I just went to an artist talk last week, and the artist that was speaking, Ian Cheng, actually made um, artificial intelligence a part of his art. So it's computer animated, computer graphics that were like self-adapting sim uh, systems with simulations, and it's supposed to like kind of somehow uh, embody like the actual real human, you know, existence. 
but it's all done through like these weird pygmy beings and it's really cool. So that's the first thing I thought of. The thing that's interesting about it, the simulation is that they'll start to remember. They'll start to remember and behave based on their interactions with other characters. So then if they can gain their own autonomy, then how does that relate to us controlling this artificial intelligence? Is it okay? If, is it only okay if it's within the virtual realm? What if it steps out of the, the virtual realm and into our, into our lived, you know, yeah. Personally, I think uh, I'm not that concerned yet at this stage because we can see the AI is still very early stage and it's not as smart as we want and they make mistakes and uh, um, so I would say we can first make a good AI system or machine learning system first and then we can worry if they will become smarter and if they will lose control. So currently we still want to like raise the baby up and then see what the baby will do in the future. I think first um, we're very far from the notion of general artificial intelligence uh, that's kind of a a much wider um, area than what we're working on we're working on kind of specific tasks in machine learning and artificial intelligence so i think sometimes when we see these claims about artificial general intelligence we are very far technically from those so even if we table the idea of general intelligence and killer robots Neural networks, while powerful in their ability, still have very real and immediate vulnerabilities. People with malicious intent can generate faulty inputs called adversarial examples that are interpreted as one thing by humans and incorrectly interpreted as another by these networks. For example, I have the paper for the physical adversary example for stop sign. It's uh, just a demonstration, but it's very simple attack by just uh, stick some paper stickers on the stop sign. The autonomous driving car passing by will misrecognize it as targeted as like speed limit sign or any sign we want. So that's very uh, scary, right? As we can see here, many uninformed users put an unnerving amount of trust into their car's self-driving systems. However, Bo Lee's research proves that an attack as simple as putting stickers on a stop sign can be highly damaging to a car's sensors. So how can we relay these important safety details to users when most people get their information in the form of marketing ads, social media posts, and sensationalist news? I see in like uh, like big city like uh, San Francisco, those cities, there are a lot of education classes, and when you buy some products, and the industry can give some simple or quick courses like what the system is doing. Kind of implicit in some of the design of these technologies is you want to please the customer, you want to please the user, and therefore you focus on the things that the customer will respond to, not as much exactly the inner workings of how that technology works. So I wouldn't say the customer needs to know every single detail about every electrical component, um, but I do think we should do a better job of communicating at least the important components. We have developed a lot of the tag, for example, tag Alexa and uh, the Alexa, when you like when you play the TV, actually the TV sound contains some bad command and the Alexa will buy you a car or something. This has happened, like this has been tried uh, for demonstration for tag. So yes, people should understand. Research has made it abundantly clear that AI products such as self-driving cars and personal assistants are not completely safe. So companies must find a way to effectively relay this information to their customers. We have already seen higher demands for corporate responsibility with the issue of data privacy. Machine learning algorithms, such as the ones used by Cambridge Analytica, are prone to be swayed by biases, become more powerful with more data, and can find generalizable patterns that can be applied to people who have never even contributed their own data. It is now becoming extremely important for consumers to know how their data is being used and stored by a company's products and services. Manisha Jain, a software engineering lead on the Gmail team at Google, wrote back to us illuminating why data privacy is important and how you can be empowered to protect your own data. Quote, when building machine learning features, companies do have to use data responsibly. They should make sure that they allow users to opt out of their data being used, encrypt it, delete it when asked, so on and so forth. Different companies show different depths of responsibility towards the data usage. They do their best, but at times mistakes happen. 
Facebook data used by Cambridge Analytica was one such mistake. Such mistakes turn some users away, for example, me, but others are okay with it. The choice between utility, flexibility, and data privacy is an individual choice, and everyone has a different threshold. Yeah, my biggest concern right now has to do with if I'm handing all the data that you as a student, for example, have provided about what's going on on your team, how I'll uh, preserve the anonymity of the person who provided the data, how I'll make sure that the machine can't learn uh, confidential information uh, that isn't the machines to share with the world. I just think Siri and I think of Alexa. Well, sometimes I feel like Alexa and S Alexa listens in without and Siri too, like at home we, ha we have both of them set up and so from time to time they'll just say something. We're not even talking to them. Checking out the so weather I just I sometimes wonder if they're recording what we're saying or listening in when they're not supposed to. Well I think we've seen the terrifying consequences with this past election. I think it's swayed a huge populace of people. I think uh, when that much data is known about you and your history and your preferences and your likes and your secrets and your things you're interested in viewing and the fact that we have this like you know supercomputer in our pocket uh, um, I think that there's ability to really control information. Many people fear AI and rightly so because the day will come when we have to make big decisions about the strength of our technology. However, for now, we can postpone the idea of a robot takeover and focus on the immediate issues that are growing due to the knowledge gap between developers and uninformed consumers. We can't trust in people who are developing the artificial intelligence or the machine learning. We can't necessarily just trust them to do whatever they want. We have to be very careful who, how they're trained in, in the world. If we have people locked in rooms coding and making things for us, we are going to have a very locked in uh, mindset. I think regularization is very important, uh, but I would say I suggested the group of people who uh, decide the regularizers for regularizations for this area would be a group of experts from AI instead of from peer people from government. I frankly don't think the people who govern at least the United States are aware enough of technology and what it could do to be thoughtful um, in creating regulations. So I would like to see more of a, a grassroots movement around how do we think about the future we all want to live in in 120 years. Um, I think there should be discussions about making sure the people that are developing these tools come from a variety of backgrounds, socioeconomic, gender differences, all these different um, ways of bringing as many different perspectives into the field, I think that'll be really helpful. And I actually think by bringing in um, more discussion into this, it makes the experts more informed and it makes the general public more informed. So I very much welcome um, debate and ethical discussion on, on some of these technologies. Corporations with massive amounts of resources and highly educated developers currently have monopolistic control over the direction we take with AI. Closing this knowledge gap through education, a continuous dialogue, and proper regulation by experts are the best ways to empower consumers to control the future of AI. This way, we can move AI in a direction that people generally find useful and safe, rather than towards areas that we just find most exciting. AI is going to continue to kind of give me things that they that it thinks I want, which sometimes works well, like, oh, I really like that, or that's interesting, you know, it gives me stuff on my feet or whatever, or my, whatever I'm going to be wearing, or <laughs> some augmented glasses or something. But in a way, I kind of hate it, too, because it assumes things about me. What I'd like to see is kind of the idea of these types of technologies help improve the way we can accomplish tasks. I would like it to complement me and free up the time that I can't use productively in that regard. Let me spend more time doing what's, what I like to do. There is so much intelligent software in our lives today that it's irresponsible to make the excuse that understanding AI is out of our reach. You definitely don't need to understand every product you use, but next time you pick up your phone, talk to your Alexa, go on social media, or get behind the wheel, you should at least know enough to feel like the driver and not the passenger. 
So when the time comes when we need to decide whether we want to use AI to enhance the human race or replace it, you'll be better prepared to make a difference.